The relationship between a man and the place where he lives is truly enigmatic. The ancient genius Lochi, the geniuses of place, knew that space exerted influence on a person's intellectual, spiritual and emotional state. For our contemporaries, most events of their life take place in towns, and this is where their cultural forces are applied and tested. Lviv is a marvelous city of Ukraine, steeped in legends. In Europe it is also known as the Little Paris or the Little London, but Lviv citizens proudly call it the Great Lviv. It can be undoubtedly compared to the ancient city of Babylon, as multiple ethnic languages mixed its paved streets, stone buildings and countless monuments of lions reflecting the history of many peoples. 100 years ago Lviv historian Chishek Yavorsky noted, if the stone lion had been able to speak, it would have said, Ich weiß nicht, čo ja robitu. What the heck am I doing here? What is that supposed to mean? You'll find an amazing mix of different cultures here – Ukrainian, German, Polish, Armenian, Jewish and Greek, and hence languages. It takes us back to the banks of the Plotva river. Today it's running underneath the city streets. The first Slavs settled on the banks of this river in the 5th century AD. But a fortified city arose much later. Legend tells about a brave king who killed a lion living in a cave on the castle hill. So he named himself Leo, established a city and began to rule there. However, historians hold on to more down-to-earth versions. One version goes that Danilo Halitsky fortified the land he owned to protect them from the raids of Tatars and Poles. He gave one of his fortresses as a wedding gift to his son, Leo. According to another version, his son Leo built a city at the crossroads of important trade routes. Lviv is first mentioned in the Galicia Volin Chronicles in 1956, when the town of Chelm was engulfed by a terrible raging fire. It happened so that Chelm was set on fire as recompense for our sins. The burning flame could be seen from afar, even from Lviv, Galicia Volin Chronicles. This reference year is considered the year when the city of Lviv was founded, in 1970. The high castle, a wooden castle on a hill, is the highest point in the city. Prince Leo was dissatisfied after wintering in a new residence on the steep hill. So he builds a new castle nearby, in the swamp air, with the high castle classified as a fortress. Unfortunately, only the name of the park reminds of the invincible fortress today. The 13th century marks the rapid growth of the city of Lviv. A settlement spreads vast between two fortresses, in which servants, the prince's squad, and courtiers lived. The prince, who was a talented diplomat, invited merchants from Germany, Poland, and the entire Kievan Rus. The populace grew as Armenians and Jews arrived seeking a better life after the fall of Kiev. Prince Leo ordered to fell the forest in the valley between the two castles, changed the course 
of Plotva, river bed, and expand the city. Each ethnic group developed their own squares, built churches and fence sand. Catholics and Germans settled outside the city, while indigenous people, Ruthenians, were granted privileged lands on which they professed orthodoxy. On completion of the castle's construction, Prince Leo ordered to build the St. George Cathedral near the high castle. At the same time, the prince ordered to build a Dominican church near the Low Castle to please his wife, who was Catholic. In the midst of the 18th century, a cathedral, the Pearl of Ukrainian Late Baroque, was founded here. The St. George Cathedral has a Greek ekidimensional cross layout design. It has four chapels between the cross frames and miniature cupolas. The construction is crowned by a molding. Numerous pilasters, banned and doubled on the walls surrounded by Rococo lanterns, add to the symmetry of this structure. The facade is a real architectural masterpiece. It is decorated with sculptures of saints. Athanasius and Leo and Saint George on the attic are works by Silesian sculptor Johann Pinsel. The outer and interior designs harmoniously fuse. There is also a memorial plaque to Frank Xavier Wolfgang Mozart on its front side. The son of the genius Austrian composer lived in Lviv for almost 30 years. He came from Vienna as a tutor. It was in Lviv that he composed his best musical pieces, in particular a piano piece based on a Ukrainian folk song. Mozart organized the first choral society after Saint Cecilia and taught children to play the piano. He conducted his own orchestra and gave live concerts. In 1818, Xavier Wolfgang Amadeus went on a four-year tour around Europe and gave concerts in 69 cities. After he returned to Lviv on December 5, 1826, Mozart's legendary requiem sounded in the premises of the St. George Cathedral. His youngest son, Franz Xavier Mozart, conducted the performance. The passion for coffee came during Austrian dominion in the city, in the late 18th century. The new rulers dismantled the walls of the high and the low castles and demolished trenches.
The first pavilions and chocolate houses with different drinks and coffee, in particular, appeared in Lviv. Coffee houses became favorite places of gathering and discussions of the local population. The Monopole Coffee House on Adam Mitzkevich Square is the favorite place of the clerisy and university students. Visitors always come here at the same time and even have their own places. Kyiv citizen Sergei Yefremov was deeply impressed with this tradition. First, I found it strange to live this coffee public life, as I came from the place where people used to hide in order to escape public life, but soon I grew comfortable with that and also became a regular visitor of Monopole. Even today, visiting Viv coffee shops is like getting in touch with the past. Armianska street is one of those that has preserved the old atmosphere. Here one can drink a cup of coffee with the great Galician chemist Jan Jozef and Ignaty Lukashevich, the inventors of the kerosene oil lamp. They were looking for a way to distill vodka out of the oil. Instead, they invented an oil lamp. So they decided to set up their own business and asked a tinsmith to design it. The lamp was displayed in the pharmacy window for a year, but nobody took interest in it. Lviv citizens didn't believe there could be a fuel which didn't explode and didn't smoke. But the first in the world night surgery under the oil lamp light on July 31st, 1853, gave the invention a promotional boost. It proved that the revolutionized lamp is not only safe, but also hygienic. Numerous inscriptions, graffiti, best reliefs on the wall take us on a trip through different epochs. Cannonballs embedded in the cathedral and the Magdalene Church wall remind us how the city desperately resisted the invaders. The period of Austrian governance was a time of growth and prosperity in the city. Austrian rulers drastically changed the city's architecture, but they did not destroy the spirit of the old city. On the contrary, they gave impetus to its development. The city was expanded beyond fortifications, and new sections of the city in classic style were formed along its ancient paths. Also, administrative and public buildings, boulevards and wonderful squares were built. City guests have an opportunity to marvel at large number of lion sculptures. There are over 5,000 lion statues in the city. Probably these give a certain highlight to the general atmosphere in the city. According to local legend, noble and respected Lviv citizens turned into lions. They got the spirit of the old city with its centuries-old history. <laughs> 